anyway my job this afternoon is to talk about dementia friendly design um and this applies equally to somebody at home or in hospital. I'm going to start off with hospitals because that's where the work started, but then uh, talk about some of the resources we have available um, and so does the Alzheimer's Society and others um, to help people at home. Um, and just to say to start with that we know we've got good evidence now that the physical environment in um, can, if properly adapted and easily adapted, have a very positive effect on the well-being and quality of life for people living with dementia and that can equally well as I say be at home where we know the majority of people um, who have dementia live. Uh, I was very privileged to work at the King's Fund uh, for 15 years running a program called Enhancing the Healing Environment and as I said in the introduction um, we looked at a series of uh, environments where people living with dementia were cared for, um, started off in hospitals, then looked at care homes, quite a lot of work in hospices and also in the prison service. So quite a wide range of different environments. And that's really what I'm going to focus on today, and particularly the development of the assessment tools, which you, I can challenge you all to go away and use um, after we finish this afternoon, if you're looking after people living with dementia. Now, Dementia, as you will all know, is an umbrella term. Um, the majority of people with dementia have Alzheimer's disease or vascular dementia, but there are many others, probably up to about 200 different types of dementia. There was some information in the press uh, over the last couple of days about a drug that may help with Alzheimer's disease, but I think like many of these things to be treated somewhat with caution. It was a very small study and one is never quite sure exactly what they've looked at. Um, the majority, as I say, uh, are people living with Alzheimer's disease, but often mixed dementia. Often you get Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia together. 900,000 altogether estimated in the UK at the moment. Um, I'm not very good at uh, brains. It's the one bit of my nursing um, training that I sort of left out when I did my final exams. It found it far too complicated, but we know there are plenty of areas, sadly, in the brain that do get affected by dementia. The type of dementia may affect the type um, of uh, disturbance that people have in their brains, and important to recognise that no two people experience dementia the same. They may have exactly the same diagnosis, exactly the same trajectory, but actually their disease will affect them differently. So with all those problems around, what we need to do with design is to make the environment, these things here, easier to understand, easier to get around. We are very bad about managing noise, particularly if you go anywhere near a hospital or a care home, it's really quite noisy sometimes. So we're very bad at managing that. All people leave televisions on all the time and also less distractions. Also remembering that the majority, again, not everybody, but the majority of people living with dementia are older people. So their eyesight's likely to have deteriorated and their hearing. And so those are two other factors that we need to keep into, uh, keep, you know, keep an eye on. Now these are old sh shots and most people think I'm obsessed with toilets, which is probably true. Um, but just a reminder really for everybody about the importance of color and contrast, because if you can get that right, you're getting the environment you're doing a lot to get the environment better. Um, this is a lovely loo in, in a hospital uh, with that lovely yellow bin. If you have some of the visual disturbances associated with dementia, what you'll actually see best is the bin. And we know that uh, gentlemen will tend to try and pee in the bin rather than the loo because that's the bit they see. So what you do need is some good color contrast. This is not an advert for red toilet seats. But in the days when these photos were taken as a series, um, they were about the only ones on the market. You can now get some very um, nice looking dark grey ones and things. What you need to do, and this is the best guidance we have at the moment, is that you need a light reflectant value difference of 30% between two colours to make sure in as far as is possible that somebody is going to be able to see things. Um, now, similarly, of course, this occurs white on white plates. Um, white plates often used in areas because people think they look clean, particularly in sort of slightly clinical areas. But if you put fish or chicken or potato on a white plate or ice cream, somebody may not be able to see it. And similarly, if you put a nice big black mat by the door, 
that'll look like a hole to many people and they will try and avoid it or not step over it. So just a real reminder really that um, colour and contrast is one of the most important things uh, to think about in terms of dementia friendly design. Um, we know a lot now about what doesn't work. Um, over on the left hand side, clashing coloured carpets and materials. Um, and that material on that sofa may well look as though it was moving to somebody with some of the visual disturbances. Below that, somebody's put some lovely wallpaper, which looks like books in this reading area. Um, and of course, um, very frustrating if you try and take the books out of the bookcase because they won't come and the wallpaper will get ripped and people will be very, very frustrated. Um, I've talked already about using white crockery and cutlery and things and really, really important um, that some visual colour changes are made to that sort of table setting. Uh, below that, there's a um, lovely mural of a telephone box. This was in a care home uh, in Wales and uh, people have tried to get into it because where the uh, uh, the handle is uh, there was a rip that somebody put some sellotape over. So again, things that don't make sense to uh, to any of us won't make sense to anybody living with dementia. Um, the use of murals, floor to ceiling murals and things are very, very distracting and potentially quite dangerous um, because people will think they're real and um, try and walk into a field or something else. Um, up at the top there, a very, very shiny floor that is not only shiny, but it's also got black bits on it. So trying to avoid what might look like holes is very poor. And down at the bottom here, we've got, I think, the worst photograph of a hospital um, basin that I have seen. Uh, actually, yes, that does work. That is actually the tap. It's a sensor tap. And what will happen there is people won't bother to wash their hands because they don't know where the water is coming from. And you'll end up potentially with everybody with neurovirus rather than worrying about other things. So there are lots of things we know now that don't work. Equally well, we know there are lots of things that do work. Um, and uh, nice clear taps uh, with good, easy handles to use, good signage, particularly for loos. Um, but with pictures and text so that if people can't necessarily read the wording, they may remember the picture. Um, and down at the bottom here, I wouldn't have used that counterpane because I think that it might be a bit zizzy to somebody with dementia, but a new good sight line to the loo um, in a care home there um, if you leave the door open. Um, so really easy for people to see, particularly if you've got some low level lighting on at night. And then areas where people can just get away from other people. They may want to hear a, a tiny little um, area in the corridor has been set up as a nice little seating area for people. And I always thought that was a really good use of the architecture that was already there. Um, I don't like nurses stations either. Um, I think they, they're very crowded. Um, the one up on the top right, I think I counted about 20 people around it while I was watching it for some considerable period of time. So actually just looking at organising the way nurses, particularly in hospital wards, differently. So you can create some seating areas for people. They can come away from the bedside and sit normally with relatives or talk to a professional, um, but something that is different. These really noisy hub areas in, in, in wards are very difficult for people to cope with. Um, and you can do surprising things. This is uh, one of the projects that we help support, but. Here we've got uh, two car parking spaces made into a, a little private garden at the back of a dementia ward. I thought it might be far too small, but actually it worked brilliantly. And since COVID, we've all had to be a lot more aware about getting people outside um, generally. And for people living with dementia, it's really important. It helps with orientation. It helps with movement, it helps with a whole lot of a number of things that improve their care. Now, while we were at working at, at the fund, um, we talked to the people who were doing all the work, which were clinically led teams, but teams from estates, um, service user representatives, arts coordinators um, and managers about how they could assess their current environment to see what they needed to do. There were some other products on the market, but they were all expensive and often quite long winded as well. Uh, they also looked at audit and I was very keen that we move to assessment rather than audit. Assessment to me implies that you can improve on things, audit is a pass fail. So we designed a first of all award assessment tool and then some others which I'm going to talk about. 
um, but they were designed to be very accessible in plain English, no funny professional wording or anything else. Very practical, um, takes about an hour probably to look around a whole 30 bedroom ward or so. Um, and they, the resources most importantly are free. Uh, they remain free um, and they've been used uh, pretty well. Well, we know they've been used internationally and, and translated into various other languages. So the first one we started off with is the ward one and they each have seven criteria looking at interaction between uh, patients or residents and staff. Um, well-being is a lot about lighting, um, obviously keeping people uh, hydrated and eating is important, continence again, uh, keeping people moving, helping them orientate and trying to keep places as calm as possible. And there are now um, six of these available. Uh, they were all uh, revised in 2020. We look back at the evidence and interestingly, not a great deal of new work has actually been published since about 2014, which makes me think that perhaps we need to start having a look at some other areas as well. We know there's certain areas um, like virtual reality that people are beginning to use, and there's no evidence at the moment to say whether well, that's a good or a bad thing for people living with dementia. Um, and then in 2021, um, we wrote a, a, a specific tool for gardens, and this is gardens in any healthcare premises. So it covers um, hospitals, care homes, health centres, um, anywhere, because there was so much commonality in the principles that actually needed to apply. Um, a page from one of the assessment tools, if you're able to see this, down the uh, left hand side there is the reason why these particular areas are important to people living with dementia and this particular set, sort of set of rationale has been really really important they've, they've provided a very good training tool for people and then a series of questions uh, mark one to five um, around uh, the dining experience this is a uh, a page from the care from the care homes tool, but they all look very similar to that. So very easy to fill in and some space for notes as well. And um, we're just about to start a project um, in Wales um, uh, to get these digitised. So I think hopefully there'll be some apps or web-based solutions available early next year. Um, in terms of outcomes, we were very keen that these outcomes should apply no matter where anybody uh, was being cared for, be that at home um, or in, in a hospital or, or care home setting. So looking at make things easier, um, trying to keep people calmer, keep them active as far as possible um, and safe. And together with those, um, we brought around there some overarching design principles. Now, these are the words that we used. Um, other people use similar words, but if you put some of the building research establishments, some of the uh, Royal Town Planning Institutes and some others, some other principles, you'll find that everybody is basically, um, they may use slightly different wording, but we're all looking at the same key areas in terms of principles for dementia friendly design. So the tools have been used for a great number of, um, uh, of things. Um, they've been used to leverage quite a bit of money to try and help people. Um, but they've also been used, as I said, as a great training tool. And often people say to me, um, what can we do? We haven't got any money. Um, well, the first thing is, if possible, try and order a skip and get rid of all the stuff that's up and down the corridors that you don't need um, and all the things on the wall that people have put on the sellotape that are half hanging off and all those things that are so distracting for people. Um, but small scale improvements like signage or use of colour and contrast or changing the crockery for the people who find it difficult to find the potatoes on a white plate buying a few um, you know, different coloured plates that really they can see well will really make a difference. Larger schemes that involve things like replacing flooring and lighting are, are difficult, so you've got to get the money for them, but they do make an enormous difference. And the other thing I think that we're finding is really, really helpful is having some snack trolleys around for people um, or little boxes so they can eat when they want to eat, not necessarily when meal times are. So you can be much more sensitive to individuals' um, requirements. And introducing smart works, and people say, oh, we haven't got any money, but most local um, 
uh, towns and villages have some kind of historical society and they've often got fantastic pictures of older buildings and you can get those blown up into big photographs with frames on so they don't look like murals and they can often actually prompt people um, who haven't really talked about things or their memories um, walking somebody along the corridor to have a look at a picture gives them some exercise uh, but it also may get them talking about perhaps a, an old football ground or the old town hall or something and a really relatively easy and cost effective way um, of introducing some some things to look at the other thing i think that's important is that we are all affected by the environment we live in be it at home where we work um, and with the problems that we have at the moment, the acute problems we have with workforce. Um, there is evidence, we need more, but there is evidence that certainly improving the environment for patients and residents in, uh, in care settings also improves staff metrics because people actually like to work in a better environment and they feel somebody's investing in the environment in which they work. So things like recruitment, and retention improves and sickness usually goes down so some important things to do now the um uh, the tools have been used to inform making a home dementia friendly which is free from the alzheimer's society um which i helped with the first edition of help the subsequent editions on that one uh, that's some very simple things um again in accessible language for people it's not in different languages and i took that from from ben's uh, uh, presentation <clears throat> earlier and we might need to have a look at that we've just released making your garden dementia friendly again similar some sensible things to do in a checklist um, dementia friendly village halls is also available that's for people using uh, village and community um, settings and running events and things just how to make the whole experience better for people living with dementia and the um, the tools inform the setting up of the dementia dwelling grant which runs across Worcestershire still runs across Worcestershire and is a free uh, non-means tested benefit for anybody diagnosed a clinical diagnosis of dementia has access to the dementia dwelling grant um, and that will provide a series of aids and adaptations for the home small ones um, they can often be things like a touch light or a memo mind or something but a really good range of small things for people at home entirely accessible the thing just as a, a if anybody decides to do anything like this and i know there are various other schemes across the country now we unfortunately when the press release said that it was a grant up to 70 750 pounds per person and that's when we thought we wouldn't we'd only be dealing with about uh, 200 people during a pilot we actually dealt with well over 500 but unfortunately some people misinterpreted it and kept on ringing up for their checks so don't ever do that so you never say how much it is you just said it is a various number so um but in actual fact probably in all it cost about 500 pound per person when you think of uh um it was helping keep people at home and if you think about the cost one week in a care home 500 pounds is not not a bad investment um the tools are recommended by uh, various uh, national bodies and if you weren't aware of it there is a health building note which was released in 2015 for um, both hospitals and care uh, care settings um, issued by the department of health um, we've adapted the assessment tools for various organisations. This is some work we did with the Royal College of Chiropractors. Um, and chiropractors can work from home, you know, a room in their home, or they can work in health centres. So we had to find something that was adaptable to all those settings. And um, they chose a slightly different way. They wanted to have a, a um, really a traffic light system um, of uh, red amber and green um, and so we were able to do that for them uh, with them and most excitingly really we're just finishing a piece of work with Ashura. Ashura are um, a very big uh, builder and then leaser of primary care premises and we know that most interactions in the health service take place in primary care or have done up until COVID, um, but they really do. It's a very, very large amount of, of the interaction between patients and doctors and other care staff. Um, and we've been developing a suite of tools with them uh, that is actually wider than dementia. It's for cognitive inclusive design. So it includes learning disabilities, 
um, autism, autism spectrum disorder and neurodiversity um, and to make it really accessible uh, with Dimensions, uh, who are a specialist charity in this area. Um, there are some easy read versions going to be available so that everybody can get involved in the assessment. Um, they're going to hopefully be released in the next couple of uh, months. So a big thank you to all the people that have helped develop the tools and, and made all this all this progress, an extraordinary range of people across the country who've been involved. And I would want to say thank you to them. Um, and I think really a reminder that it isn't just about the environment, it's about changing people's attitudes and particularly changing people's attitudes and behaviours towards people living with dementia and their carers. Uh, and that's been a very, very powerful learning lesson, I think, for us all. And just to say, there's my contact details. And uh, if you want to access the tools, these I think will be coming around and I know there's a recording as well. Um, you can have a look at them there. So that's, I can stop sharing at that point and take any questions. That's um, amazing, Sarah. <clears throat> and thank you so much. I mean, um, you won't know that I'm an ex-care home uh, manager. And so I used to, you know, work in dementia environments and I'm a John's campaign ambassador as well. Yeah. So I'm all about trying to make things as, as friendly as we can for people. And I, it, it's, it's, it's really around changing that attitude, which matters the most, because I've just written down here different coloured plates now to when I talk to care homes going, oh, what colour are your plates? And I know that they will go, well, if I buy red plates, those red plates will just go to anyone and they won't go to the right person. And that's the, the ingrained attitude we have in, in the workforce that needs to change. We need to understand people as people. I think the work you're doing is incredible and those tools are fantastic. And I'll be sure to share them with uh, my networks as well.